okay guys this is a demonstration video pretty much um, this car has some vibrations on the engine it's not here for that but I wanted to show you I just got the new Pico NVH uh, kit the one I have is the four axis uh, kit that comes with like two sensors and so this is the kit it has two sensors two cables it has four wires for a four channel oscilloscope this is the one from Pico Scope. Uh, this back is uh, I got all the stuff for the scope as well. So I'm gonna show you how is the setup for this to work. So I'm, I was already using it, but I'm going to start new so you guys can see. So this is what is what is going to show you at the beginning. I have a flash on. Well, that's okay because I have to show you the connection inside the car as well. So you need to have some sort of uh, inter interface in between the car and the computer because the Pico is going to need to have a, an RPM signal. You can use uh, an RPM pickup in the front of the car if you don't have any, you know, J pass through interface, but I have one. I have the car to so I'm going to use that for this video. Uh, the Pico scope that I have the 44, 25, 4 channel oscilloscope, and that's the NBA sensor in there. This one has the X, Y, and Z. I think this is the newest one. Well, I just got this one. This is December 2016. Okay, let's go over to the setup. So I'm gonna set up this as new. I just automatically or by default ask you to add a J2534. You can choose, like I said, you know, on a square wave tachometer or in a static RPM in case you don't have either you can just or, or neither you can just start a card and see what the idle RPMs are and just input those in there so I'm gonna click next it's gonna read well, I have to put the ignition on or actually start a car otherwise it's not going to work all right sorry for that all right as you can see right now I read the card M that's the flash right there, so I'm not sure if I can take it off. Let me stop the video one second to take the flash off. Okay, back in business. I removed the flash from the camera. All right, as you can see, the text, the car that came right there. Now I go next. One second. Okay, so this is because I already selected it before, but let's say, you know, this is a... Uh, in here, you can set, you know, an inline or B-type B engine. This and this car is going to be a six cylinder it's a rear wheel drive car so I select uh, sorry it's a front wheel drive front wheel drive car and the 225 60 R16 does this right size for this car too I have the three channel uh, MBH interface And that's the sensor I have in there too. Let me see what else is in here. Yeah, no selection. And I just click next. Okay, it's connected and the card is running. You can see there is reading some, and this is what you also need. Like, uh, let me demonstrate what they're looking for is to have some sort of a changes. You see, I just hit right next to the sensor and the bar went almost to the full, so. I click on next. It's very important when you set up the sensor or in the front of the car that okay in this case I got that wrong <laughs> or a move. Oh it was because it got loose. You gotta make sure it's very nice and tight and that this is facing this should be facing forward always either on the seat on the driver's seat or here you know I'm putting them in there just to demonstrate the the engine mount noises or vibrations sorry for the glare in there okay I click next and then finish and then you click on start recording now it's buffering uh, by default it goes to the frequency you also have a 3d frequency which is a little bit more nicer to see and then you got the bar graph. Hold on, guys. I had a 
my snap-on guy here, so I got to talk to him first. Okay, I got the engine running right now, and as you can see, I have some vibrations, uh, some E1s, E.15s, E2 and E5 and E3. Sorry, those are going to be just different frequencies, but these are coming from the engine pretty much I'm going to accelerate the car so you can see how the bar goes off the hook all right as you can see right there e15 and e2 are going oh, too much that means we have motor mounts bad so with the four axis, uh, the other sensor, what I can do is just connect, connect it to channel, uh, the yellow channel on the picoscope, and then go and put the sensor closer to the motor mount that I suspect is the bad one. All right, then that's pretty much the setup. Again, uh, you have to be very careful on where to put the sensor and where it's facing. On a road test, you will want to put that sensor on the seat rail and then use the four axis if you have a kit like the one I have close to the tire or where you suspect the noise is coming from if it's giving you a T1, T2 or T3 which is tire vibrations of noises then you go and you put that four axis sensor on any tire let's say you know left rear the noise is right there it's going to be the amplitude is going to increase on that tire specifically then you know that's the problem otherwise you're moving into another tire another tire or closest to the propeller shaft, front axles, or in this case, the engine mounts. And that's pretty much the way the setup goes. I hope you guys like the video. If you like the video on the channel, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you so much and have a good day.